Hey there, I'm Tom from BarLenses.com and today we're going to be talking about the Canon EOS RP. Released just after the Canon EOS R, the RP was met with confusion by both pros and enthusiasts. While the Canon EOS R is certainly a decent camera, I think we were all left expecting a professional level mirrorless on par with the Z7. And then they released this? Okay, so where does it fall in Canon's lineup? If you're coming from the world of crop sensor cameras and want to dive into full frame, then the RP might just be for you. It's the cheapest full frame mirrorless camera you can buy. It's been met with a lot of heat online, but really the specs are not half bad. Let's jump in and see just what the EOS RP is good for. It's got a 26.2 megapixel full frame sensor, 5 FPS continuous shooting, 4,779 point dual pixel autofocus, and for video you get 4K at up to 24p. For all intents and purposes, the RP shares the same sensor as the 6D Mark II, but it's got an updated Digic 8 processor. Also like the 6D II, noise at high ISO is almost unbearable, so I would advise you to stay away. Also like the 6D, it's got a fold-out LCD screen that's touch sensitive, and it will use EF and EFS lenses using Canon's RF to EF adapter. And while it doesn't have in-body image stabilization, it has digital image stabilization. The RP is equipped with basic controls that kind of remind me of the Rebel series cameras with the wheel position to the right of the viewfinder. This camera is smaller than the EOS R with a grip that feels a little shorter and a little thinner. It also uses the LPE17 battery that you can find in the EOS M cameras. Uh, that's rated for about 250 shots. When recording video, you get 8-bit 420 internally and 8-bit 422 via HDMI. Unfortunately, the RP gets a 1.6x crop when shooting 4K. Still, however, it's less than the EOS R's 1.7x crop. In HD, the RP uses a full sensor readout, but here's the kicker. In Full HD, you can only shoot in 60p or 30p. 24p is only available in 4K, which means that you can only shoot 24p with a 1.6x crop. The specs and performance are pretty fine, but let's compare this camera to other cameras in Canon's lineup. The obvious choice would be the 6D Mark II. After all, they're cut from the same cloth. The 6D Mark II only has 45 cross-type autofocus points, but will shoot 6.5 frames per second. For video, the 6D Mark II does not have 4K. It will shoot Full HD up to 60p or Full HD at 24p. I also want to take a look at the ADD. No, it's not a direct comparison, but they're so close in price that it begs comparison. The ADD has a 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor, 45 cross-type autofocus points, and 7 FPS continuous shooting. It will also shoot Full HD up to 60p. I will admit that the ADD is getting old and the RP is obviously brand new, but if you're looking at purchasing an ADD, I'd also recommend taking a close look at the RP, especially if you're primarily going to shoot stills. And lastly, I want to take a look and see how the RP compares to its bigger sibling, the Canon EOS R. What do you gain for $700 more? Well, 30.3 megapixels, Canon's 5,655 point dual pixel autofocus, 8 FPS continuous shooting, and for video, 4K up to 30p or high speed in 120 frames per second at 720p. The EOS R records 8-bit 420 internally and 10-bit 422 via HDMI. It also has C-Log built right in. Lose a few megapixels, some fancy customizable buttons, a top panel LCD screen, and tone down the video capability considerably, and you're basically left with the RP. No, these cameras cannot go head to head, but once again, the RP has value on its side. For the money, you get a whole lot of camera, I think. Is the EOS RP gonna blow you away? Definitely not, especially if you're coming from the world of full frame already. If that's the case, then this is not the camera for you. But if you wanna make the jump from crop body to full frame, then this is the cheapest available option, and for the money, you get a lot of camera. The lack of 24P in full HD and the low battery life are clear letdowns. But in nearly every other area, I'd argue that this camera is a steal. However, if you're looking to shoot video, then this is probably not the best option for you. If a crop sensor isn't a deal breaker for you, then there are some better options out there from other manufacturers. Sony's A6500 smokes the EOS RP for video performance. 5-axis in-body image stabilization, 4K up to 30p, and 120 frames per second in full HD using a full sensor readout. 
It also has slightly better battery life and great stills performance. Alternatively, there's Fujifilm's X-T3, priced slightly higher than the EOS RP. You get 26.1 megapixels, 11 FPS continuous shooting, and 4K DCI at 60p. Those specs are seriously impressive at that price point. But if you've gotta have full frame, the RP is a pretty solid deal. So there you have it. That's my take on the misunderstood EOS RP. If you wanna learn more about this camera, you can read our blog post about it by following the link down in the description. Otherwise, you can rent this camera for yourself at borrowlenses.com. Thanks for watching.